Good evening, Hans from Dakota Angler. Back to do some more tying on the Whiting Farms page. Got a few different flies lined up tonight. Thanks for joining me, coming live from Rapid City where it's seven o'clock and the sun's still out. I guess spring is officially here. We've been out getting some fishing done this past week. I hope you all have too. Kind of helps get excited about tying a few more flies once you get out on the water and um, get to actually put those flies to use. So tonight we're gonna tie a few different flies starting with a couple caddis dry flies and we are going to then transition to uh, a few different soft tackle patterns. Um, the first fly is going to be a um, kind of a, I don't know, I was looking in the fly bins here at the shop the other day and saw a um, Henryville Special, it's kind of an old school fly, and then it kind of inspired me to try something that doesn't look exactly like a Henryville special, but, um, but definitely has some influences there. And we will kind of start with, with that fly. I guess I'm calling it a wonder wing caddis, but, um, just kind of a, just kind of a good kind of all purpose caddis pattern. And I'm going to switch over to the vice now. And what I've got in the vice is a barbless dry fly hook um enjoying this um this barbless hook from kona there's quite a few different um hooks out there now kind of in this genre from whether it's uh firehole or or kona or fulling mill but this bdf has got a nice um nice look to it and we're going to tie this this caddis pattern right here so got some different parts to it but um kind of a cool little pattern floats well and will be be a nice um nice searching pattern or you know fish during the caddis hatch or something you can use with a dry dropper uh rig for sure so to get started i've got that uh kona bdf hook in the vise um thanks again for for joining me tonight quite a few have joined here in just the last couple seconds so really appreciate the audience um and if, you, if you're just joining, I'm Hans from Dakota Angler here in Rapid City. You can check us out at flyfishsd.com if you're not familiar with us. Um, and we also have um, a lot of fly tying videos on YouTube. So, and thanks to Whiting Farms for having us on their, on their page tonight. So I've got that, that hook in the vise. This is size 14, Kona BDF. And I'm going to use... Um, some Semperfly Nano Silk in 12 aught, and I'm gonna put. I guess this is kind of optional, but adds a little bit of flotation. Then kind of an egg laying hot spot. I just took some some two millimeter foam and chartreuse. You could use orange or yellow, whichever kind of hot spot color you want. I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way to the front of the hook, tie in that little uh, slice of two millimeter foam. Wrap to the back of the hook. And then we're just going to cut that off and leave that as a little egg laying tag. And then we'll dub the body with some ice dub like material. I like ice dub a lot from Hairline. I also really like this huge ice dub dispenser from from Hens, which we carry here in the shop. It's really nice to have that handy all those colors and I'm going to do this one in like a tan so I'm just dubbing a fine noodle of tan ice dubbing on and then I'll just go back over this foam and just lay down a nice um lay nice abdomen and for the wings on this, then I'm actually using, so I really like these Whiting Coctelion necks. There's a lot of cool feathers on it. Like from the back, there's these really big speckled feathers. There's my daughter saying, hi, hi Elsa. Thanks for watching. And then you get a lot of cool, like little 
little speckly feathers along the edge. And then you get some cool like badgery feathers right down the middle. And I started getting these for tying steelhead flies and then used some of the speckly stuff for trout fly tailing. And then when I was looking at that Henryville special the other day, I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to, to make some wings on this um, that are kind of, you know, splayed out from the sides like a Henryville special, but do it kind of in the folded hackle style. And, and so what you can do is like, you get a lot of these feathers on these necks. It doesn't have to be a Coq de Leon neck, but you get, you know, these kind of middle feathers on the cape and whether you use some of the feather or not, you, you have some like odds and ends that you can make these wings out of. And all you're really doing is you're taking that feather and you're folding the fibers back. And then you're using this section here for the wing. And so what you can do is just slick those back with your, your thumb and forefinger. And like on the far side of the hook, I'll just do that one first. That's always the trickiest one. I'll just fold those fibers back drop my bobbin over those and then tighten up so I've got one wing in there but we're gonna have to trim out quite a bit here we're gonna have to trim out this this section here and then all these fibers at the front all right somebody from uh oh my other daughter is feeling left out. So I said hi to Elsa. Irene is also on here. Hi, Irene. We've got somebody from Argentina tonight. That's awesome. So I'm going to do the wing on the other side now. I've got the feather prepared the same way. And I'm just going to match them up so I've got kind of the right length there. i got to take my thread over the top loosely drop it in place, keep some tension on there so you don't lose those, those hackle fibers. I've definitely been frustrated by tying this fly a little bit where you have it just right and then you bump something and it, it comes loose on you. And so now I've got my wings in place. Look like they're about the right length. I can go ahead and just tidy everything up. So I'll just trim out my And you can make multiple wings from one feather. You can also use this same style of wing for like a, a mayfly dry. You're just going to tie them upright. Now I'll go ahead and trim out my all my fibers on the front. Here you got to be really careful. If you let up your thread tension, it's easy to lose some of those fibers. So I've got a couple fibers sticking forward. I'm going to just go ahead and trim those out as well. Now I can just kind of finish up. So I've got now kind of my spent wings on. I like to give this fly a little bit more, more wing with some CDC, just kind of something that sticks up a little bit, adds a little flotation, but kind of helps with the visibility as well. So you could do a tan CDC I've just got some natural CDC handy, so I'm going to use that. And I'm not going to tie the, that in quite as long. I'm just going to put um, that just a little bit shorter, kind of more like the length of the body. Tie those feathers in. I just took a few natural CDC feathers, stacked those or made it up the end so they're nice and even. And now we've got kind of most of our fly in place except for our hackle. So I'm gonna tidy up this little front area here. Got everybody happy there. And now we'll do a, we'll do a brown hackle in the front. This is a whiting saddle feather. And again, you can tie this kind of however your, your, your caddis are. I mean, this one's kind of more tan on the bottom.
with the brown brownish hackle on the front. You could definitely do more of an olive body. This one's a little bit more of that tan color scheme. Just gonna wrap my hackle. A few wraps. Oops. One thing about that nano silk as a base, it is a little bit slippery. So especially if you got a little taper to your thread there, it can slide a little bit. There we go. Which it's wanting to do on me right now. Everything's harder when you're trying to film it, especially film it live. We'll use the power of nano silk here to kind of slide everybody back there for me. There we go. Would have preferred that hackle to be just slightly neater than that, but oh well. All right, and now we can whip finish. We got a couple stray hackle fibers there. Don't need a lot of turns with the nano silk. Nice that it compresses down very nicely and gives you plenty of uh, plenty of power to kind of compact things and get a nice clean head. So there we go. We kind of have an egg laying caddis pattern we got those those wing elements in there from the the larger coq de Leon, um neck five or neck hackles you could use um you know some neck hackles from a larger streamer neck that you have um those would work just as well but kind of a cool little bug mess around with that this is a size 14 um definitely could tie this down um a bit smaller you know 16 18 as well for us um here in our our streams and even just a little west of here getting into wyoming and montana size 14 and 16 are kind of the bread and butter of caddis flies so all right Got some local folks on here. Got Aaron Laterra. We just got a nice shipment of his dubbing in. If you like tying big flies, check out his Magnum dubbing. We just got that in stock. Really appreciate everybody joining here tonight. So next, we're going to do another caddis pattern that I completely forgot about. I do have a video on this fly on YouTube. But it's a pattern I learned from watching Oliver Edwards' video. And I was lucky enough a number of years ago to um, actually host Oliver Edwards here in the Black Hills. And um, it's a bubble wing caddis. And just a really great caddis pattern. Um, it incorporates CDC as well as... Um, as well as hackle. And the bubble wing has been a really great pattern for me. Um, but if you tie a lot of flies and do a lot of fishing, you kind of change your flies all the time because you're tying new patterns and things get edged out of your box and forgotten about. And uh, this is definitely one that I kind of forgot about for a little bit. Hey, Jay. Jay Heeb from Rapid is on. Bamboo rod maker and customer of the shop. And i uh, glad that you joined us tonight. Um, but this, uh, this bubble wing cat is definitely one of those patterns. I don't know why it edged its way out of... Uh, Susan from Estes Park is on. Thanks, Susan. Thanks for thanks for joining tonight. Um, but this definitely deserves a spot in your box. I, I'm I'm going to tie more of these up now that I remember <laughs> remember the pattern and 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 can actually uh, sit down and tie a few. So what I am going to do with this is same hook as I used in the last fly. Um, this is that Kona BDF and you don't have to use this hook, but it's just a nice dry fly hook, barbless using more and more of the competition style barbless hooks and they're good for the fish and they're just great hooks so i got the um i've got the hook in the vise i just did a layer of thread first thing we're going to do on the bubble wing caddis is um 
take a couple of tan CDC feathers. Again, you can tie whatever, you know, if you've got, you know, predominantly gray caddis, use gray CDC here. Tan is kind of our, our, our best all around caddis color. And for this fly, I like the larger kind of European style um, CDC feathers like you get from either um, Swiss CDC or Dean Street from Hairline. And a couple usually is enough. I mean, these are really big, um, big kind of heavy duty um, CDC feathers compared to a lot of like the natural mallard feathers that we use um, or get a lot of times in, in certain packs of um, CDC feathers here in the States. But, you know, now these are pretty readily available, like I said, from, from Swiss CDC. We carry them here in the shop. And what I'm going to do is you got kind of a curve to the feather. And I want that curve, rather than being kind of sloped down, I want it to be curved up. And I'm going to tie this in kind of way back in the thick part of the feather with a few loose wraps. While everything's bundled, I'm going to pull that back. So I've got just a little bit of that feather captured at the back of the hook, and I'm gonna wrap that down. And you see how that feather wants to kind of curve up? So I've got that nice curve to it. That's gonna help when I kind of use that feather for a wing in the, in the fly here. So, <clears throat> I've got that trapped. I need to add just a little bit of tension there. Make sure that those are, are nice and secure. You don't want that popping out on you while you're kind of mostly done with the fly and then you got to start back over again. Okay, so next I'm going to take some whiting saddle and this is just a like a light brown. Tie that in at the back of the hook. I got shop class vise and some loose jaw on it, which is bugging me, but there we go. All right, so I got that tied in. And I want that tied in so that as I wrap it, the hackle cups forward. Next, I'm gonna take some tan dubbing. I'm gonna use some Semperfly. I hadn't really used this till this week, messing around with it. This new Capoc dubbing from Semperfly. Really a fine, super fine natural dubbing. Very similar to like silk dubbing that I've used in the past. And we'll dub that. Looks like John from Chicago is on here. Hey, John. Good. Thanks for watching. Just gonna dub a pretty fine noodle. I don't need a lot of a lot of dubbing here. This Capoc dubbing dubs so tight it'll almost dub segments on there. Don't necessarily need that on this fly, but it won't hurt anything. So I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way forward, and you'll see. We're just going to wrap this hackle just like you would palmering it forward on a elk hair caddis or something like that. Now I'll tie my hackle off. You have a couple options with this. Sometimes I'll trim this off, and then other times I'll just uh, I'll just leave the hackle in place which is what i'll do here sometimes i'll switch hackle to a little larger hackle for the front of the fly um, or change colors but in this case i'm just going to keep it pretty streamlined and simple i'm going to just keep that hackle kind of angled back and out of the way a little bit and here's the bubble wing part so i'm going to take this cdc you can see how it's kind of got that nice natural curve to it and i'm just going to fold it over the back of the fly Tie it down. So it's a little bit short there. I want that to go back a little bit farther. So I can take, with a loose wrap on the on the feather, I can take either a bodkin or my scissor tips. Now, let's, let's just take it back a little bit. You can pull it back with the bodkin, but I'll just, 
She's my... There we go. I'll just use my fingers to kind of get it the right length. So all I did there was just kind of give it a nice overhang over the back of the fly. See, it kind of has a nice tent shape to it, but kind of a bubble where it gets that, that name, bubble wing caddis. You get a few loose fibers over the back. You just want it to overhang about a quarter of the length of the hook shank over the back of the hook. Once you're happy with the shape of the wing by just kind of tweaking it a little bit here and there, you can go ahead and, and trim out that excess CDC. And then we'll just finish the fly with a little more hackle and dubbing. One thing you can do here, it's totally optional but looks pretty cool, is take um, some C or, uh, Cock de Leon fibers like these uh, speckled yellow fibers. This is from a, he or a, a, a cape. You can also get them from the tailing packs. But take a couple of those fibers, tie those in for some antenna. Again, totally optional. I don't think the fish care about this. Some of our tan caddis in the summer here have these really long antenna, basically almost curve back past the length of the body. So I've got a couple antenna in there now. You can even, if you want, you can curve those a little bit. Just using a little bit of pressure in your fingernail. I'll take just a tiny bit more of this uh, Kapok dubbing from Semperfly. Really fine stuff, it, it dubs so easy. Dub a little bit. Oh, Diego from Ecuador. That's awesome. Glad to see people from literally all over the world on here tonight. That's awesome. So now we'll just finish the fly with a few wraps of hackle at the front. Just carrying that same hackle forward that we used on the body. Tie that off. Give yourself room to tie it off and whip finish. You don't have to crowd the eye. Then we can whip finish that. I'm using this the Nano Silk 12 Ot from Semperfly. You don't need a lot of wraps of this to whip finish. Three or four is plenty. And there's the bubble wing caddis. Like I said, learned that from Oliver Edwards, who came out to the Black Hills. I don't even know how many years ago, forever ago, but. Just a great fly tying mentor, and um, this is on one of his DVDs uh, that he released, and it's a it's just a great great pattern that I'd kind of forgotten about until I was looking at some of our old YouTube videos the other day and remembered this one, um, and it it works tremendously well during the caddis hatch. Um, this one is a size twelve on that Kona BDF. Definitely could tie this much, uh, much smaller um, and, and you know, kind of change the color scheme a bit to, to match the caddis on your stream grays or um, an olive body with the gray wing, but, you know, what, whatever works for you. But this, this is just a stellar pattern. So definitely tie some of those up. Definitely see the bubble wing, but folding that pattern over, you get that nice caddis wing shape. Ed is just commenting that he's here or watching from Boston. Thanks for joining, Ed. All right. So we got a couple of uh, caddis patterns um, that we've rattled off here. Um, kind of switching gears to some soft tackle patterns. Um, first one is one that I've been messing around with uh, doing some um, trout spay fishing. Mostly smaller streams here in the Black Hills, but um, we've got... 
just across uh, into Wyoming and Montana, we get into the Bighorn, the North Platte, and we do a lot of uh, trout spay when we can. And um, and this one has kind of got a few elements. It's got a nice br uh, Brahma soft tackle and um, kind of a almost paragon tinsel type body. So a marriage of a couple popular type of uh, patterns. This is a good dropper pattern when you're fishing trout spay, or if you're not fishing trout spay, you can definitely, you know, just use this. Um, you know, a lot of times soft tackles are really overlooked, just fishing them either, you know, even on a small stream as a swing uh, or on the swing on, at the start of a, uh, of a hatch, um, they can be really deadly. So, um, definitely don't discount, um, just the standard soft tackle in your everyday trout fishing. Kim is watching from Indianapolis. Thanks for joining us, Kim. And all right, got our hook in the vise. This happens to be a fulling mill, kind of wide gap. Um, I think they call this the grab gape hook. Kind of a great hook for for uh, tying um, soft tackles. And I'm going to use a Brahma saddle for this. You could also use, depending on, if you watched our, my last video a couple weeks ago, I really like these, um, these Coq de Leon, um, capes. And if you want like a really soft, soft tackle, then the Brahma is perfect. A lot like partridge, um, a lot easier to tie with just cause the stems are so much finer. Um, but I also really like this this um, speckled Coq de Leon. The, the, the cape, like the, the Coq de Leon cape, uh, hen cape, is going to give you a little stiffer fiber. And the, um, the Brahma um, saddle is going to definitely give you um, a little softer fiber. But we'll go ahead and tie this one with the Brahma tonight. So I'm going to just stick with the same thread. This is the 12-aught Nano Silk. Again, this is a wide gape fulling mill hook but choose a wet fly style hook that you like but I've I found this one to work quite well so I'm going to take a Brahma feather off of this saddle I'm going to use a, a brown and I'm going to take some of the fibers from the lower part of the feather first thing I'll do I've got all the fluff on there I can just go ahead and get rid of that. So I've got a nice clean feather there. I'm not going to use this whole feather from my soft tackle. You could save some for other flies, but I'm just going to go ahead and steal some of the fibers off the bottom part of the feather here for my tail. So I just stole some of those fibers, bundled them together. I want the length of the tail to be about equal to the length of the hook shank. So I can tie that down. Now I will grab some silver wire. Tie that in. wrap back down to the, the base of the tail. Next thing I'm gonna use on this is just give it kind of an iridescent flashy body. I'm gonna use some of the Simperfly Paragon tinsel. This happens to be the blue color, but this is just a basic template. You could use whichever, whichever color you wanted. And I'm gonna peel off about eight or 10 inches and then Take that, fold it in half so I've got two strands. Wrap forward a little bit, tie in those two strands. Wrap back. Now I can go forward, kind of smooth out all the bumps in my body here. Make sure there's no big gaps. That way, when I wrap the tinsel forward, which I'm going to do for my body, it lays down nice and smooth. I'm 
There we go. So I just went kind of two thirds of the way to the, the front of the hook. I can trim out that tinsel and save it for another fly. And I'll go ahead, wrap my wire forward. Tie off my wire. Either break or trim off my wire. There, we'll just trim it. If you want to give that tinsel a little bit of extra durability. Roger from North Carolina just joined us. Thanks, Roger. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just add a little bit of durability to that tinsel with uh, some, some bone dry from Solar Res. Really nice ultra thin UV resin. Hit that with my light. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of a thorax before I do my final hackle. And I'm just going to use some natural hair du hairs dubbing from Nature Spirit, their hairs mask dubbing. You really don't need much of it for just a little thorax on a soft tackle, just a pretty small little ball. That's all you need. Put just a little bit more on. Pull that back. Guard hairs weren't going to hurt anything, but anyway, took them out. Okay, so now I have that feather I started with a while ago, and I'm going to prepare it to tie in for my, my collar, my soft tackle collar. What I do with these, all my soft tackle feathers really, is I take the feather, if you watched me last time, same thing, I just fold that back. So I've got that nice little point at the front and I'm going to take that point, trim it out. So I've got a smaller tie in point. Now I can tie in or excuse me, I can wrap my collar and all I do before I wrap my collar is just take and pull some of those fibers back a little bit. So they're nice and um, folded back. That just helps when you start wrapping the, the, the hackle. You'll get kind of that nice sweat back wet fly hackle. Jason, thanks for joining and for commenting. Glad you could make it. So I just... Did about a turn and a half. You don't need a really thick hackle. And then I'll finish this fly with just a little bit of hot orange thread on the head. So I'll whip finish my nano silk. switch bobbins on I've got a, a 12 aught fluorescent red which to me looks more orange but I'll build up a little orange head seems to be a trigger you got those little hot spots built into a fly and we'll go ahead and whip finish Again, this is a pattern that you could, you know, change the color of the body, change the color of the hackle to suit what you're you're doing with it. But I use patterns like this as droppers on trout fly or trout spay rigs. Uh, but it's also just as just as um, applicable in a stream fishing situation before a hatch. I've had really good luck with with um, a lot of different soft tackle patterns. If you're using like a Euro nymphing rig, you can run your heavy. Um, tungsten weighted fly 
on the bottom of your rig and then off a dropper tag, run a little soft tackle. And that's that works tremendous. But it's kind of a fun template to play around with. Um, that that Brahma hackle is so versatile that it just is something I go to for whether it's little soft tackles like this, different nymphs or um, steelhead patterns. I use it all the time. We'll use it one more time in, in a slightly larger, um, larger soft tackle pattern. Same type of hackle. You can use the, the Brahma saddle. You can also use a, a Cock de Leon saddle. This is a really nice, um, nice style of fly, you know, kind of like a, a big soft tackled nymph. Um, you could put a tungsten bead on this and fish it part as a nymph rig. You could swing this fly part of a trout spot, uh, trout spay, uh, rig. And, um, it's just a really versatile style of fly. Um, even a good lake pattern. Um, and what I'm going to use for this is, uh, another barbless style hook. This is a Fastna F900, which is a little streamer hook. And it's really kind of a similar template to that last fly, obviously not the exact same, but you know, you got the same elements. You've got the the hackle tail, and you've got um, you know the uh, the big soft tackle collar. And just to kind of differentiate it from the last fly, so in this fly, you've got uh, Brahma on it. This fly, you also have Brahma on it. The the pearlescent soft tackle we just tied. I'm gonna go ahead and and. You can do the same pattern. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to this um, this nice modeled Coq de Leon um, hen cape called Brown Speckled. And what you'll get out of that is just a little stiffer fiber. I mean, fly that still works the same, but um, you can see this is this is the fiber I pulled off there. Just beautiful speckling, kind of um, gives you that nice uh, partridge-like look, but a little nicer stem to work with, much longer feathers. So I'm just switching it up just a tiny bit to show you how those different feathers can give you a different um, different fly, even if you're using the same template. So for the tail on this. I'm going to just do the same thing as I did on that last fly. Lower down on that feather. I stripped away all the, the soft stuff. I'm going to grab some of these fibers. Just grabbed them and peeled them off so I got a bundle of them. We'll tie, all the, tie those in for our tail. Stray piece of nano silk there. Tie that in for our tail. About the, this is a longer shank hook, so you don't want it to be as long as the, the hook shank itself. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Norman. Appreciate the comment on that last fly. Hopefully, hopefully you tie some, some of that style up yourself, and hopefully they catch some fish for you. I appreciate you joining us tonight. I've got my tail tied down in this now. You can see it's a little bit sparser than if you use, even though it's the same fly, if you use that Brahma, you're going to get a little bit, you know, that's a Brahma saddle. The feather's a little webbier, fuller. And I switched it up, and I'm using some of that, that, that hen cape. This is a Coq de Leon hen cape from Whiting. The rib on this, I'm going to put um, a gold round tinsel from Legarten. You could use silver if you wanted. We'll tie in our rib. And now for the body on this, I'm going to use some awesome possum dubbing and use olive. Just started tying with the possum dubbing. It's really actually just a great natural dubbing for nymphs, even emerger patterns, easy to dub. So we're going to dub 
a good three quarter, well, two thirds of the hook shank here. And so you'll need a fair amount of dubbing. This is a size 10. Obviously you could scale this pattern way down 14, 16. Taper that slightly so it just gets a little bit thicker as you go forward. I'll add just a little bit more dubbing in there. Okay. So now I'll, I'll just rib the fly with that oval tinsel. Flies almost exactly like some of the red fox squirrel nymphs I tie, which has been one of my best, just kind of standard nymph patterns, too. Just fantastic fly, not really all that different of a format. Oh, Rick already tied one of the bubble wing caddis. That's awesome. Hope you get a chance to go catch a fish on it soon. All right, so I'm going to do a thorax now on this. And I'm, just, I'm going to use some ice dubbing in a contrasting color. It's like the midnight blue, I believe. One of the new colors from Hairline. Since this is a fairly big fly, I can afford to put a bit of dubbing on there. Okay, and then I'm going to use a, a feather from that same Cochleon hen neck. I'm going to do the preparation the exact same. So I'm going to find a point in, in the feather where I like the length for the fly that I'm tying. I'm going to fold that back. Trim out the tip of the feather. Tie, it, tie the feather in by the tip. And then before I start wrapping, I'll, I'll take and fold those fibers back. And then as I wrap, I'll fold those fibers back. Just kind of keep everything swept back so I get that nice folded soft tackle look. With the hen neck feathers, if you want it to be a, a little fuller fly, you're going to need a few more wraps in the saddle. Just the, the fiber is just not as full and webby. But you get just a little different look. Go ahead and tie that off, trim off the excess. Then you can whip finish. If you wanted you could just like on the last fly i mean i like a lot of these hot spots if you've got your bobbin handy it's not hard to take and switch that thread and give it just a lot more a lot more pop and a little bit of an accent oops brad thanks for the nice comment i appreciate that glad to be able to be here tonight and showing you guys some flies guys Really appreciate everybody showing up tonight. So I just switched my bobbin, gave it a little bit of a, a red um, thread accent, orange thread accent. So now you can see my example pattern. I had Brahma or Cocteleone saddle. They're pretty similar. The Cocteleone is a little bit bigger on average. Um, this one I tied with the Cocteleone hen um, neck. You can just see how that, that fiber is a little bit finer. You get a little softer look to it. It's not quite as bold, but a really nice, um, a nice style of fly, either kind of a soft tackled nymph that you could put a tungsten bead on there, tie it a lot smaller. You could leave it bigger like this and strip it as a, uh, a fly on a lake, or you could even swing this as a trout spade type fly, but just a really, um, 
really fantastic kind of platform um, that lends itself to a variety of fishing situations. And then just by changing from a hen saddle, either in a Brahma or a uh, Cocktail Leone to a, um, a hen neck, you get, you know, even a little different look and different style of fly. So a lot of fun things you can do with, with those different feather types and just really enjoy time with both those those Brahma lines and the and the Cocte Leone lines. Not just for Euro nymphs. Cocte Leone has so many great uses. Now I'm definitely gonna switch gears. One of my passions is fishing for steelhead uh, on a swung fly, a lot of summer run steelhead out in Idaho and Washington and going to tie just a simple hair wing that uses some cocktail leone hackle um but i've also um actually caught quite a few trout just swinging these little hair wings like this um uh like trout spay on the bighorn which is kind of fun to use the same fly for uh steelhead um you know sea run rainbow in idaho that i uh caught fish on you know a river rainbow on, on in montana um but just another way to kind of demonstrate a use of that cocktail leone feather so i'm going to put a um steelhead type um hook in the vise this happens to be a gamagatsu t10 6h and uh great just kind of all-purpose um wet fly hook for steelhead fly super sharp super durable again this pattern doesn't have to be just for steelhead you can use it for um for trout even um or just kind of use it as a template to, to tie something else um and just learn to use these these different feathers in different ways um so this one is is kind of a a, a bit of a leap but it's still kind of a spin off of a a, a coachman and I, I do tie a steelhead coachman pretty traditionally just very simple and that's been one of my best steelhead wet flies um in this case it's going to be a little bit brighter and flashier than that but I'm going to start my thread. I'm just using the same thread for all of these. That's kind of the benefit to this stronger, fine thread is it's easy to use for a variety of patterns. I started my thread here. I'm going to wrap back just about to that hook point. And uh, so Rocky's got a question about the CDL in the tailing packs. I believe that is from a rooster. Um, kind of a lot of those feathers are from like the back of the cape or the sides of the cape even even from parts of the saddle but um th those long straight fine fibers are, are rooster feathers so i'm going to wrap back my threads about even with the hook point here that uh, whiting farms commented rooster so luckily i didn't lead anybody astray there and we are going to do a little bit of a tinsel tag on this I'm just going to take some flat silver and gold tinsel, size small. If you've never caught a steelhead on a swung fly, there's not that many of them out there anymore, and they're not easy to find, the wild ones in the West anyway. Um, get after it. It's I, There's not much better than that. It's, a, it's an incredible feeling. That's why I love tying these flies. It makes me think about the fish I've caught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, piece of this tinsel and you know this is gold facing one way silver another I'm going to I'm going to do a gold tag so I want the gold up tie that in I'm going to wrap back about 3 or 4 wraps and then I'm just going to wrap forward again and then tie it off it's kind of wrap back over itself. Trim that off. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of a hot spot in the form of some glow bright floss in chartreuse. I just took a couple strands of that. Tie that down. myself a little bit I'm kind of bungling that up a little bit but that's okay I'll wrap my 
my floss for a few turns here, the back of the fly. I'll go ahead and trim that out. So I'm gonna switch and use Cock de Leon for my tail. I'm gonna use feathers from a cape. This one happens to be kind of yellowish. I'll get a good stack of fibers from the cape. Make sure they're evened up. I'll tie those in just a little longer than the, the tags. Tie those down, flare them a little bit with that thread. Go forward, trim off some of the, the excess. Go back to, this is kind of where you can see that a lot of flies have the same lineage. And that's last soft tackle. I'm now gonna tie in, they're just not that different of flies, they're just materials used in slightly different ways. Take a piece of that same gold oval tinsel, tie that in, wrap it back to my tie-in point there. Now, a lot of times I'll use peacock curl on, on these flies, but I'm just gonna stick with the ice dubbing I have and take kind of a peacock colored ice dubbing. I'm gonna dub that forward. Build my dubbing noodle here. bigger hook than most of the trout flies that tie. Take a little bit more dubbing. There we go. Dub forward. Just same like any other fly. I just want to give myself plenty of room at the front here. Go ahead and rib the fly. With my oval tinsel. Oops. Take out the excess tinsel. Now I've used actually a lot of my steelhead coachmans that I've caught fish on. I've used um, I've used this Brahma hen saddle for my hackle on them. Um, Cameron's got a question. So if I did it with peacock, all I would do different. So this is just a peacock ice dubbing. I would have tied the rib in the same. Um, tied in three or four uh, pieces of peacock curl, wrap those forward. Usually with peacock, I'm a little bit more careful to counter wrap my ribbing over the peacock um, just in case, uh, you know, the fish breaks a piece or, you know, during fishing that peacock can be a little bit more brittle. And if you counter wrap it with your ribbing material, so in this case, I wrap my, um, my ribbing the same way just over, over the hook. But if I was going to tie it with peacock, I'd wrap the ribbing towards me. So you're crossing um, the opposite direction over all the peacock curl and locking it down a little bit more um, and, and just adding some durability to the fly that way. A little less worried about that with dubbing. So, um, you know, not, not tremendously different, just changing the direction that I, that I rib the, the fly if I use peacock. So you could use a softer hackle here. I'm going to stick with the Coq de Leon neck hackle. And I'm just going to use the feather, right? This is kind of a golden yellow one. You could use kind of a silver badger as well. I've used that. 
You could even use that hen uh, cocktail and speckled hen um, neck that I was using. But what I'm going to do is just take this feather here and, and wrap it like a soft tackle feather. So take some of these nice fibers in the middle of the feather. I'll grab just a slightly smaller feather. And a lot of these these feathers, I still wrap like I would a hen hackle. And I'll just take that feather, fold it, fold the fibers back. So I've kind of straightened those fibers out. And trim out this right here. So I've got a little tie-in point. So now I'm ready to wrap my hackle. And just like when I do the wet fly hackles, I'll fold those fibers back with my thumb and forefinger. And then as I wrap, keep folding them back. It's a technique I use all the time. Just keeps those fibers from tangling with one another and gives you that nice kind of swept back wet fly look. So now I can trim that off or tie it off first. Then I can trim off the excess. What I like on steelhead flies, I still like using this fine 12-aught thread because it gives me a nice fine base where my wing is going to go and I didn't have a lot of thread build up. So this is a hair wing where I'm going to use gray squirrel for the um, for the wing. I've already taken some of that, put it in a hair stacker, even it up. Got that all evened up, and I don't like my wing to be super long on these. I want my wing to be kind of just kind of right in at the back of that tinsel there. So I'll measure that, then trim it. So I got nice flat ends. This is another reason I will, I like the nano soak is when I've got my, my wing kind of lengthwise, I like, I already trimmed the, the hair for the head. I'll lay that kind of out of focus there. Sorry about that. I'll lay that down, tie it in with a couple of wraps. I can put some pressure on it, make sure it's not going to slip out on me. Tie that down. I know I've got plenty of thread tension keeping that, that hair there. And then I'll go ahead and whip finish. Trim that out. Use the old, the old same trick that I've been doing on a lot of these flies. Take my bobbin that has some brighter orange or red thread. Switch over. This is a 12 aught fluorescent red semper fly. Oops. I just made. series of wraps to cover up my my lighter colored thread trim that out this I do like to finish with a little bit of solar res bone dry this is the new bone dry plus which is really thin and I really like it a lot we have it at the shop and it's about all I've been using for for most of my flies. Just go ahead and let that soak in a little bit. Then I can hit that with my light. If actually, I guess you get a little superstitious steelhead fishing, but that little bit of a thread accent on the head of flies seems to be a bit of a trigger. I've done pretty well with flies for steelhead with that little bit of 
an orange head. It doesn't seem like much, but when they're tough to come by anyway, um, you'll take whatever advantage you can get. So there we go. Just not real fancy, but just a simple little hair wing um, type fly that we use out when we go to Idaho. Uh, but like I said, um, it's also this style of fly just like this has worked for um, worked for swinging fish on, on the Bighorn River in Montana, which is not very far away from us. And we do a lot of trout spay fishing out there. Um, but there we go. I got few different types of fly patterns there um few different soft tackles couple of um caddis caddis patterns so a little bit for everybody hopefully um um you know it's it's kind of fun to tie with those especially those different soft tackle patterns and just see the versatility of those brahma um brahma feathers which you can see up behind me we've got some brahma you know both in the the hen necks and and in the uh, uh chickaboo soft tackle with chickaboo um definitely stock all this stuff in the store so if you have any questions um about the feathers that we used in the in the flies tonight you can reach out to um, us either on Facebook or you can you can reach out to us directly at the shop. But um, you know I, the the whiting line of of those types of feathers is so versatile. I use it all the time, um, so I wanted to feature more of those tonight. Really appreciate everybody joining us. And like I said, I'm Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter. Really appreciate you spending some time with me tonight. And um, hopefully we'll be back sometime. And yeah, reach out to us here at the shop. We're uh, happy to help out, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.